Well, welcome to the Student Housing Matters podcast. I'm Alton Irwin. I'm uh, the Chief Marketing Officer here at COCM. And we're continuing our celebration of our 20 year anniversary this year. And part of that has been to talk to former employees of COCM. And so I'm pleased today to have Patrick Savaklis, who is a one of the very old employees <laughs> of, uh, I'm an old guy too, but very, very, let's just put it this way. You're a very early employee yes. in our 20 year history. So welcome, Patrick. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. So Patrick, let's start off, as I mentioned, you were one of the very early employees of COCM. And, and if I understood correctly, I don't think I realized this till we started talking. You were there before Doug and Sandy yes. arrived. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a, f a few months. Did you get here? In uh, about half a year. Like it was like about f first four months into my job, I think they came on board. Okay. So let's begin with you just talking about the story of how you came to COCM and what roles you served while you were here. So I came to the group, um, I was working at Cornell, I was running the housing dining office at Cornell University up in Ithaca, and um, one of my, uh, we had a listserv for NYU, my grad program, uh, you know, it was like an email listserv, and a guy named Carl D. so put a post on, but uh, he had a job opening, I think called Capstone, I think it was, it was Capstone, what was it called again? It was just Capstone, it was all one big company. Management, I think. Yeah, yeah, and so um, he it was a general manager position at um, Millennium Hall at Towson University, and so I had no idea about privatized student housing. I never heard of it before. I, know, I had no idea what the details were. So we got on the phone, we started talking. It sounded very interesting. So it was a concept I never uh, never considered. And so long story short, um, I came out for an interview, got the job as a general manager at Millennium Hall. That's how I started. But it was really just a list of like just random connection with a guy. It was, it was a great program. So Millennium Hall. Uh... How had it been open a number of years? Yeah, it had been open about um, well, it opened up in 2000, that's why the name Millennium Hall. So it had been open, okay. um, at that point, like three years. Okay, all right. Um, and, and so I came there and um, I was a general manager for uh, the first two years, and then um, uh, Doug and Sandy came on board, and then we started like getting properties. And probably like three years in, they made me a regional manager. So I at one point I had um, Millennium Hall, I had um, Bowie State, I had uh, University of Baltimore, University of Baltimore County, um. City College and uh, Queens College. Wow. And those are properties that partnerships that we still have. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was all very different, but it was, it was very um, interesting because like, the scope of the, of the buildings were, was somewhere like 300, somewhere like 1,000 beds. So it was very big differences in operations. Yeah. Um, so you started out as a manager and then you went to be a regional manager, correct? Yeah, yeah about three years. Yeah, I got promoted. Which was, I was very happy with that. I really enjoyed the work and it was very, um, especially on the projects where we were, we were actually working with development, building new buildings. And that was very exciting. Like, the uh, see, like Queens College getting their first housing. Everyone was very, um, like, it was cool to say the change of the campus. Cool. So, any interesting stories about your time here? Uh, people, relationships? Uh, I think, I think that we, you know, the, 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 Everything's based in you know, Birmingham, but the thing was like we, we for the first few years, so like I would talk to people on the phone or email, and so for the first year and a half, I hadn't been to the the home office in Birmingham, and so first time I came down there, I like, met people in person for the first time. I'm like, oh, I thought you'd be taller. Like, oh, I thought you'd be like, oh, like it, 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 not, the, not the man. That I was not thinking of badly, but like certain people I met, like, oh, you don't look the way I think you look. Like, you don't look that like. It just, yeah. they, they look, you know, you talk to them on the phone, like, oh, you're, you can just make a picture in your mind of like, she looks like this, but when you met her in person, like, oh, you look totally different. So it was, it was we were experienced like not um, working with people at, and they were all wonderful staff to work with, but like just, you never met them in person before. So it was kind of like a weird working relationship. But now well, it's not so weird, but back then it was weird. Well, that's a long time before Zoom. Too. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, but that was, that was the only part, like, um, the neat, the other neat part was, um, the support we got from the home office, like, cause obviously we're out there by ourselves, but they were all really wonderful, like, you, like to be there for when we need help and helping us with problems and solving things. Well, I know that one story Doug likes to tell us says in the early days, they had their first meeting in, in a hotel room. Yeah, uh, we did. They basically just took one of the rooms, somebody was, uh, <laughs> occupying and, and used a bed and spread the papers out yeah. on them. Everybody pulled a chair around them. Is so, it Baltimore? Yeah, that that's so you were part of that meeting. Yeah. Wow. It was, it, was like, it was like five at that point it was like four of us, I think. Five. Oh, wow. Did you ever did you ever think about the future and think that it would grow to what it is today? No, I was I mean I think they've done very well obviously. I I, I knew there was a potential there, but like where they are now is like, you know, I 
I'm I'm impressed how far they've gone. And they seem to be keeping keep everyone on the state on the even ground. One thing I will say is though, part of my job with Capstone, I end up doing our takeovers, like when we get other firms to do as well with properties. And so I realized you know there are other firms out there that really weren't doing the work correctly. So we, I think Capstone had a really big advantage. Like Doug and Sandy were very good about like and Mike, um, you know, was also good about like saying. Like, this is the way we should do it. This is the right way to do it. Like I know, like we, we gave up some contracts that weren't right for us, and so I was very impressed by that. Like the, the Capstone had a very good sense of like who they were and what they weren't, what they were not. Yeah, that's great. Which yeah. I think is kind of rare because not, not rare, but like some of the other companies we go up, we go up against, particularly ones that were publicly traded. Like I think they're much more focused on like let's make the money, not so much of providing the service. Yeah, that, that, that's that's a that's a great insight. Um, so. Patrick, tell us about where your career has taken you since COCM. And I'll start out by saying I was just looking over your LinkedIn profile, and it looks like in total you worked at five different schools and a, a few before you came to COCM and then a few after. So Yeah, I, yeah, um, yeah um, I've worked at Drexel University, George Washington, Cornell, um, Rutgers, and um, um, I mean, obviously cut my time with it. And now I'm currently at Purchase College, but it's a student system. But um. I also, obviously, with Capstone, I, I've, I've dealt with a lot of other institutions, other, other universities. And it's, 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 a, it's been really good. Like, one of the great thing about Capstone for me right now is uh, I, I, I oversee our executive corporation at SUNY Purchase. So SUNY is uh, – New York and California allow their schools to form separate 501c3 corporations. So okay. I'm actually the, the head of a, of a nonprofit corporation that provides extra services to our campus. So it's not like – I'm actually not an employee of the college. I'm actually an employee of the, of the group. So – um, it, my time, my time at Capstone was very helpful because, like, right now I have the same issues. Like, I have to care everything, like payroll, uh, HR, um, all the stuff that we do on our sites at Capstone. I do now, like, for the corporation. So, some of the experience I had at Capstone was very really helpful for me to do this job now because, like, I understood certain things already that I, I wouldn't necessarily would have if I was just working for universities. That's great. That's great. So, so a lot of the experiences that you had and the learning you had at Capstone has been helpful. It's helped. transferred very well. That's true. It's been a good transfer, and also, um. I think it's important to, like for people to think about Capstone's career, like or working for Capstone is. It gives you a chance to learn stuff that you wouldn't learn like working for a university. Like if you're in housing or residence life, whatever you want to call it, you know, you don't usually deal with budget and HR as much. So if you if you take the job at Capstone, like those are two things you have to deal with on, a, especially as a GM, like firsthand, and that's experience that you can't get at a lot of schools, like until you become a director. So Capstone gives you the ability to like get some skill sets that you wouldn't have like otherwise. I think for years. That's terrific. And it's also very you know. It's, especially because it's housing, like you're, you're right there on the front lines doing it. So it's, it's, it's not like you're back in office somewhere. Like just like push a paper. That's terrific. Well, Patrick, as you think about when you started at COCM and what you learned, what advice or recommendations would you give to a new employee here now at COCM? Obviously, you know, um, try to get to the people in the home office. I mean, if you get down there and meet them in person, it's great. Um, but the other advice I give them is just ask questions because there's people on the team. I'm sure that I, I, I don't know right there, but I'm sure there's still people that, that have a lot of knowledge. And like, like I said, they were great resources. Other, my colleagues were really good resources. And I found that everyone in the company at that time was really good about like, like trying to help each other out. Like, you know, if we had problems at one site, like, I don't remember a couple times we would travel to a different site to help out one of our other regional managers. Like, if they had problems with staffing or, um, like, I covered a, couple, I covered a building for a while, like, out in, uh, Frostburg, Maryland. I remember I went out there for a like weekend and covered the building because they had some problems with staff. So I just went out there and sat sat in the building for a weekend, just helped my staff, my my colleagues out. So I think it's a great thing about the the, the group. And I think if you're an employee, like reach out to people and ask questions because there's a lot of people I'm sure at the organization now that has a lot of, have a lot of knowledge, like have done that, been there, done that. They can help you like not make the same mistakes twice. That's great. And you know, a lot of folks talk about that the company feels like a family. And I'm yeah, I'm, yeah, I agree. I'm glad that folks feel like they can reach out to each other and. Uh, you know, connect and, and be a support. I think the, the, I'll say, let me say this. I, I do want to say this. Like, you know, the great thing about why I work for Capstone that it was different from working in higher ed was Doug and Sandy and, and Mike too. Um, you know, I think he, Mike's retired out, right? Yes. Yeah, but even Mike too was like, they're very good about like, they weren't, like, they, they didn't judge me on my last mistake. They judged me on my, like, more on my last success. Like if I made a mistake, they weren't like, they didn't focus on that. Like when you work in higher ed, sometimes they focus on like what you did wrong last. But Capstone's very good about like you know you've done things right you still do this one right so don't do that again and like let's go let's go forward so it was it was, it was very like very freeing in that way because I, I knew I could make a mistake and not get like yeah I mean they, they would hold me accountable for it but they weren't like okay like you know we can't trust you anymore because you made a mistake and and yeah. higher ed is a little bit different but I think this thing about Capstone is a proper company they they were very much like 
what can you do for us to make that up? And like, how do you do, how, like how do we make this better? Instead of like, you you screwed up and like we're, we're gonna like punish you for that. Well, that's terrific. I'm glad that you uh, had that experience because uh, leadership that helps you succeed is certainly better than leadership. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I get that now in my, my current job, but like some place I've worked, it's been, you know, it, it was very much like, just don't, don't, don't screw up and you know, you'll be okay. And it's, it's kept very much like, well, what can you do to make things better for us? Like they, they encourage us to like try new things. If it, if it worked, if it didn't work, so be it. And so, um, obviously I don't want you to make, they would hold me accountable if I made a big mistake, but fortunately I never made one of those. It's just like a little stuff. Oh, that's terrific. Well, you certainly have a great legacy here and people think very highly of you and your time here. So I fooled them all. thank you for what you <laughs> did to help us in the early days and help us to become who we are today. We no, obviously, I'm happy to do this because I think you guys have a great group, group of people. And it's a good organization. Well, great. Well, Patrick, it's been so nice to talk to you and, and to uh, touch base with you and hear some stories about your experience at CLCM. And again, thank you for what you did to help CLCM in its 20th history. Thank you so much for your time.